Okay, today, on today's episode, we're going to take the carburetor off the bike, we're going to clean it, and we're going to put it back on, and it's going to work perfectly the first time, I promise. Okay, this is just a simple Jaikov carburetor. It's just simply, let's see if I can get this to untwist, it hasn't been off in a long time. I'm going to untwist this, and then I'm going to be able to pull the whole plunger and barrel and needle out. See what kind of shape they're in. Okay, they look uh, remarkably good, actually. I'm just going to put that there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off these two bolts, but first I'm going to pull the air box off so I can get this off. I'm, I'm going to be very careful with this because these are very brittle. This it used to be rubber, like really flexible rubber, but over the years these get really, really brittle, and you got to be super careful with them because if it breaks, I mean, you could mash something together to try and fix it. I could probably order a new one from uh, Czechoslovakia or Germany or India or some, somewhere and get a new one of these, but I don't really want to. So I'm going to pull it apart. I'm going to put it on the bench. And uh, yeah, so I'll just step back. We'll, you can watch me take this off and we will get her on the bench and see what she looks like inside. So this, give you a better idea of what's going on in here. It's real simple. This is just your standard Java motor. The cases look different over time, but they're a pretty simple motor. Carburetor's pretty simple. I'll just go pull those two bolts off, and then we'll have it done. I might spend some time cleaning in here because it doesn't look like it's been cleaned since. Oh, okay, we, I own it. We've established that. We know exactly how long it's been, been dirty. Forever. Okay. Let's just pull that off and then we're done and we'll go to over to the bench. Okay guys, here we go. We're going to take this thing apart. We're going to uh, hopefully find nothing wrong with it. I'm not, I'm not holding my breath where I can find anything wrong. We're going to take it apart and hopefully we won't find anything massively wrong with it. Uh, I don't think so from everything else that was wrong that, or that we found that was right. Uh, inside the float bowl, I don't think we're going to find anything massive. There might be a little bit of dirt, maybe a little bit of debris, but I don't think we're going to have any big issues. Again, these things are simple, and uh, all carbs are mostly simple. They're a little bit hard to set up. They take a little bit of art to set up. But a carburetor like this, there's no vacuum, there's no nothing. If I take the, the screws out, I'll count how many times I take them out, and I'll put them back in the exact same amount of times. That'll get me close, and I can just tune it once it gets on the bike. No big deal. Okay, let's see what happens. This is the first time I've taken this apart. So, hopefully, I can snap this top off without screwing the, the uh, paper gasket. If I do screw that up, oh, geez, that came out easy. I guess we don't have to worry about that. There's no gasket in that whatsoever. Well, it never leaked. There's the float, nice and clean. Excellent. So, okay, there's inside the float. There's inside the bowl. And you can uh, see there's a little bit of debris in the bottom, but nothing, nothing that bad. This is gonna be a simple fix, I think. Look inside here. I see zero issues inside here. So I'm just going to take and I'll scrape some of that stuff off the bottom. And I think we're good. Okay, right on. Let's get this done. That's got it. Everything's going to come up. It's going to be nice and new in there. Well, sort of. I think that's enough. So you can drop a 
paper towel in there to get most of that up. Nice thing about carb cleaners, you don't get all that, it's not a big deal. I'll go right through. So there, it's a little bit cleaner. I think that's good enough. I don't think there's anything here that's going to cause any issues. Um, yeah. So I'll just put this all back together. It's as easy as this. These carburetors are the cat's ass. They're 100% reliable. So I'll just put this back together and then uh, we'll go ahead and put it back on. I'll get that air box put back on. I can always change the filter later. So yeah, so let's go uh, put this uh, cart back on, put everything back together, and uh, be done with it. Let's get this done. Okay, let's go, boys. Okay. Carburetor's reinstalled. I'll put that stupid light back up there. I keep knocking it down. But, let's turn this one on. Carburetor's reinstalled. Bolts are on, plunger's on. Works beautifully. Stick that in there. Everything's back together. Now I'm just gonna go over. Here's the, the tank. I started polishing it up. I'm out of breath. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just uh, finish polishing it up and then uh, I'll go ahead, put the side panels back on it, and we'll uh, put that on there. But let me do this off camera. It's going to take me a while, and there will be some swearing involved. But, yeah, everything's looking good. Should have fired up soon. Okay, let's change this oil out. I'm assuming there's still some in there. Probably take take off the oil to drain out of there. It's just over a liter. 1.2 liters is what's supposed to be in there. Um, but it's very cold out here. So, I'm just gonna let that go. There's no way for me to warm the plate up. Because, uh, it's cold. I can't fire the bike up because it hasn't run. And blah, 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 blah. So we'll just let that drain for a bit. I think that's about all we're going to get out of there. It's been draining for about 20 minutes now. Like I said, it's cold here. This is Canada, and it's November, so that kind of stuff happens. But I got 99.98% out. Of course, that's just a guess. When you tighten the... Uh, this the drain bolt on any valve, any uh, engine. Do so carefully, don't over tighten it. It's not going to leak if it's snug. It's not going to back out if it's snug. But sure how it's going to leak and be a pain in your ass if you over tighten it and strip those bolts. I got most of it out. I'm sure that's at least a liter, if not more, of oil. And look good because there's not that many miles on it because I didn't put many miles on the bike over the last little while. So to show you here, uh, now all I have to do is put oil back in it. So I've got my transmission funnel because there's a small end on it. These things, it's not a very big hole. So this fits in there perfect. I pull it out, but I'm just going to cause chaos if I do that. So I am going to jump for that. I'm going to put some oil in it. It should take 1.2 liters. I've got two liters of uh, 2050 motorcycle oil I'm going to put in there. Always use motorcycle oil because if you have a, a wet clutch like this bike does, you could cause slippage and just 
mayhem if you put the wrong type of oil in it. Okay, let me go ahead and put oil in. As you can see, the battery's in place. That's a six volt battery. I think I stated earlier it's a 12 volt bike. Well, I'm an effing liar. It's a six volt bike. Positive ground, That's again, that's what I was saying. It's a 1978 bike with six volts. That's a camcorder battery. Get it any used battery place. They're dirt cheap. They're way cheaper than a lead acid battery. And this battery is, I don't remember when I ever charged this, but it's still got a full charge on it. It doesn't mind the cold. doesn't mind being cycled for, for charging and stuff. And, you know, you can throw it wherever you want. So if you're building a bike or a custom bike or whatever, that's the way to go. I've got the same type of battery on the Triumph. And, uh, Things bulletproof. Okay, I'm gonna put some oil in it and uh, then let's see if we can start this thing. Okay, the first liter is in there, so it should take no more than another 0.2 liters. So, your guys' job is to watch that hole and tell me when it starts coming out so I can stop. Just gonna put a little bit in the funnel at a time so we can go down this hole. Oh, there we go for sure. If you guys can see, all right here, it's going to start coming out that hole any second now. And that, see how it's coming out like molasses? That means the crankcase is full. So I'm going to go ahead and put the screw back in. You know, so the copper washer in there. In my experience, these things don't leak because the oil just barely comes up to there in the at the best time so you're not going to get much leaking out of the out of the hole i'll just go ahead and tighten that so i don't lose the all that screw and that's it guys we have oil in the engine i'm going to go in ahead splash a little bit of two stroke gasoline i have it's pre-mixed and i believe it's at 25 to 1 um, I've never had a problem with mixing it at 25 to 1 with a modern modern oil. I don't have much of this. I just have about half a liter, I think, in there. But it should be enough. It still smells somewhat like gasoline. It's the first time gas has been in this tank, I think ever. Of course, I don't know if it leaks. I don't know a lot of things at this point in time. Now, once I get it running, I'm not going to keep it running for very long because I'm in a closed garage and it's below freezing outside. For you Canadians, it's 10 degrees below Celsius. For you Americans, I don't know, figure it out. It's in the Probably in the teens or the 20s. So, shit freezes pretty quick. Okay. So, I'm going to open the tap. I'm going to tickle the carb. Let's see if any fuel's coming out of here. I don't know if fuel's going in yet. So, let me see if it's flowing. Just do that here. This is usually where I get covered in gasoline and burst into flames, which makes for great YouTube videos. Nope, no flow. No flow whatsoever. So I put fuel in it. Um, the petcock wasn't flowing. Now the reason for that, and I'll show you on this other one, is with the new fuels, they really mess up the old rubber. If you look in here at this one, there should be two holes. Of course, it's going to do that to me. There should be two holes, one here and another one right here. And as you can see, there's nothing. Both those holes have swollen shut. So that was part of the problem in this, and then there was a little bit of debris in it from the fuel tank. I've got that straightened out. I think I should be able to be good. I put uh, some fo engine fogger in it, 
just so that the cylinders aren't dry when I first start to kick it. Just in case you gotta kick it a few times. Here's the starting procedure. It's a secret, don't tell anybody else. You tickle the carburetor, two kicks with the ignition switch off, turn the ignition switch on, one kick and she will fire. That's my plan. I'm going to put the camera over here and we'll see what happens. Now this of course will work the very first time without any doubt. This old girl will not let me down. You tickle it until you see fuel coming out. All you're doing is pushing the float pole down. This is take make sure there's fuel flowing. Yeah, there's fuel. There's fuel. That's for sure. No, I'm coming. Right? You just tickle it. You can tickle it until the hole will fill all the way up, I guess. There we go. Okay. There's fuel in it. Coming up both cylinders, popping nicely. Yes, sir. Okay, guys. I think I can officially call that fixed. Um, she's sitting in an idle. I've got to. Uh, turn it off. That was awesome. Started exactly how I wanted to start. Um, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to drain the rest of that fuel out of the out of the out of the tank. I'm just going to leave the tank dry for the winter. We got six months where I'm not going to be able to ride it for sure. And uh, yeah, that was pretty freaking amazing. I honestly, I was expecting failure, man. I've watched too many times. I've watched uh, uh, Chris. On Beas for Build and and uh, the guys on uh, Roadkill, too many times I haven't seen that work. I was uh, so expecting that not to work quite as beautifully as it did. So we'll talk to you guys next week. Next week's episode is going to be a single episode on the Harley Davidson. Um, I don't have it anymore, but I did do one episode before I sold it, so I'm going to put that episode out next week. And then the episode after that, I'm hoping to work on the Monarch. No promises yet. Got to wait for some parts. And yeah, so this has been fun. Let's keep it going. Uh, thanks for everybody who's visited and watched. Um, feel free to subscribe. That's up there in that corner. And then check out a couple of my other videos. And um, yeah, until next week, go grab a beer, kiss your wife, and you guys have a good week.